Hello everyone this is Lord Rimuru. I am here to bring you guys fanfiction that you will surely enjoy. But before we get on to the video please be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more amazing content. CH.6. Trap and idiot meld was in crisis, and it was understandable why. 10 meters in diameter, bluish skin, scarlet eyes and two bullhorns, it was a behemoth. There used to be a group of adventurers who called themselves the strongest. But it wasn't out of arrogance, they really were the strongest adventurers. The group of 20 adventurers entered the Orcus dungeon declaring that they would dominate it, but only one of these adventurers returned and the cause of this was this creature that was in the last room on the 65th floor. There was only one person alive who had met Behemoth in person. It was Meld Loggins, the surviving adventurer. That day Meld saw fear. This creature had slaughtered his friends, but Meld had no desire for revenge. On the contrary, Meld was thinking how to escape from this place as fast as possible, for he knew that the hero and his group had no chance against this creature at their current level. If Rimuru and the knights were here they could have a great chance of escape with Rimuru, Meld and Kuki slowing the behemoth down while the knights made their way among the skeletons. But now there were only him and the students here, he knew that the students would not be able to battle the skeletons. As they trained on the upper floors Meld realized that most of them were easily frightened by the monsters. In this unfamiliar situation they were not going to be able to kill all those skeletons. Shit. Kuki and his group make your way between those skeletons while I hold this thing. Meld San I'll help you, let's kill this monster. Idiot. That monster killed the strongest adventurers that ever lived, you don't stand a chance with him. Still I can't abandon you. Me too. Kuki and Ryotaru spoke confidently. Meld realized that they were not going to give up and began to prepare for battle. The rest of the students were being attacked by the skeletons. They were too scared to have any combat coordination, so they were simply attacking the skeletons. Hajime was scared too, but he didn't lose his ration, he realized that they had to run away when he felt the pressure emitted by the giant bull. He was killing the skeletons by making them slide off the bridge and fall into the chasm under the bridge when he saw that the girl next to him was about to be attacked. He used transmute on the ground and made the skeleton slide. One of the students took the opportunity and killed the skeleton. Meanwhile Hajime supported the back of the girl who was lying on the ground and said. Look don't worry, they are not that strong if you calm down. Even because everyone but me is very strong. He said that and gave a smile to reassure her. Oh. Thank you. Hajime helped her up and then rushed off in Kuki's direction. When he got there he saw Meld injecting mana into his sword that was wedged into the ground while forming a barrier, preventing the behemoth from getting through. However the barrier was almost in pieces. Meanwhile Kuki and his group were discussing whether to retreat or not. Amanogawa, we need your help. While the students were fighting with the skeletons. Behemoth attacked once again and the barrier was beginning to give way. Ku. The barrier won't hold Kuki hurry back, you too. No. We must all come back alive. Commander Meld's expression was bitter. The best option now was to run away while the barrier was standing, because in a narrow space they would not be able to dodge the attacks. But only experienced people knew that and Kuki was too stubborn to obey him. In addition Kuki wanted to challenge Behemoth. Kuki thought that if it was him, he might be able to overcome this monster. But Meld knew that he was overestimating himself. During training he would always praise them so the students would keep their confidence high, but it seems he overdid it. Kuki lets back off. Shizuku who understood the gravity of the situation tried to pull Kuki for them to back off. This is not the first time Kuki has been irrational. I will help you. Thank you Raitaru. The muscle brain encouragement only made the situation worse by making Shizuku click her tongue. Are you guys drunk? Understand the situation, you big idiots. The moment she saw Shizuku nervous Kaori became even more anxious not knowing what to do. Grua. Behemoth attacked the barrier once again making it give way even more. At this moment Hajime arrived. Amanogawa we need help. Hugh? Nagumo? Nagumo-kun. They were surprised by Hajime's arrival. Hurry up and retreat, they need you. What are you saying? Don't worry about it leave everything to us. This is not the time for that kind of thing. Hajime grabbed Kuki by the collar and pointed at his colleagues while looking at him with a serious look. They are bewildered because they don't have their leader with them. You need to go there or they will get hurt. Kuki looked at his colleagues who were scared fighting the skeletons. Alright, 
Commander we will come back for you. Wait for us. Kuki and his group went to help their colleagues. Meld thanked Hajime and was about to give him an order but Hajime spoke first. Meld san I have a plan. Meld was confused, but Hajime explained his plan and then. Can you do it? Yes. Seeing Hajime's determination and confidence, Meld had no choice but to accept. All right boy we'll come back to save you. Now go. When Meld spoke this he withdrew the sword that was stuck in the ground and began to recite an incantation. At the same time Hajime ran towards Behemoth from the edge of the bridge so as not to hinder Meld's attack. When Hajime was close to Behemoth Meld's sword glowed and he launched a large horizontal sword of light that struck Behemoth's head causing him to lower his head. When Behemoth did this he felt the ground around him pin him down. He had his paw's head and horns stuck in the earth the cause of this. It was Hajime. He waited for the behemoth to lower its head and used transmute to trap it. When Meld saw that the plan worked, he turned to help destroy the skeletons. Assume position. Don't forget your training. Those bones are nothing to us attack with everything. When the students heard the voice of their trusted commander they regained some of their calm and began to fight properly. With Meld and Kuki's group they quickly managed to finish off the skeletons and reach the stairs but before they went up Meld shouted. Wait. They looked at him with looks that said, the escape route is here why do we have to wait? We have to help the Hajime boy, he is holding the monster for us. They were confused when Meld said that the useless was holding the monster by himself and then they looked in the direction Meld pointed and there was Hajime holding the behemoth. Nagumo kun. When Kaori saw the danger Hajime was in she was shocked and remembered the dream she had last night. Any moment now he will run out of mana and come here as fast as possible. While he's doing that cast your long range spells on the creature to slow him down. Hajime was using transmutation to hold Behemoth back. Every time Behemoth would escape he reinforced by repeating the spell and whenever he was almost out of mana he ate a magic pill. He used his last transmutation when he saw his colleagues ready to cast their spells and then ran as fast as he could. The students were casting their long range spells, Hayama was about to aim his fireball at Behemoth when he remembered something. Last night Hayama was anxious and couldn't sleep so he went outside for some air and when he came back. He heard Kaori's voice coming from Hajime's room. He hid and saw that Kaori was in her pajamas saying goodbye to Hajime. And then today Kaori kept looking at Hajime and smiling at him. As he remembered these events a dark feeling grew inside him and a troubled smile appeared on his face as he changed his target. Hajime was running. He looked back and saw Behemoth advancing but he was also somewhat reassured because at this rate, if his colleagues accepted Behemoth with spells, he had a great chance of escape. Hajime then saw Behemoth retreating because of the rain of spells passing over Hajma. But when Hajime looked forward again he saw a fireball coming towards him. Why is it coming this way? He was knocked down by the fireball and tried to get up, but he stopped when he heard Behemoth's breathing. That breath was really close, in fact it was right next to him. Behemoth was looking at him angrily and attacked him with his horns. Hajime managed to dodge it, but the attack hit the floor of the bridge and caused it to give way. He and Behemoth fell into the abyss that you couldn't even see the bottom of. Nagumo kun. Kaori screamed and tried to jump together to save him but was held back by Kuki and Shizuku. Stop Kaori. You can't go there. Let me go I need to save him, Nagumo kun. Kaori screamed as she tried to jump. And Shizuku, who was holding her, thought, How does she have so much strength? Meld approached and slammed the corner of his hand into the back of Kaori's head, causing her to faint. Meld san, you didn't need that. No, Kuki. He did right, thank you, Meld san. We can't lose anyone else. Meld spoke in a heavy voice. Going back in time a little. In another room on the 65th floor, Rimuru was surprised. Not only did this man in front of him use magic from his universe as a source of power, but also knew his true identity he had many questions for this man. Hey how did you? Ha 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 ha, he tried to speak but was interrupted by an arrogant laugh. I can't believe those bigwigs were so afraid of you. They went crazy when you arrived ahead of time, formulating various plans. I thought you were supposed to be strong. But apparently you have nothing to do with your sealed temporal magic, do you? I'll make you become my servant and then they'll have to respect me. Ha 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 ha. He finished with another laugh. Eh? He wants me to become his servant. Wait. Why does he think I'm weak? What do you mean, seal san? Dot. 
Dot. I get it. But how does he know that my temporal magic has been sealed? Dot. I see. Wait he said that the said figurons were scared because I arrived early so they were planning to call me to this world and ambush me? So since I came here together with the heroes group they have to form a new plan, but then why did they send this weak guy to give me wheels this information? Rimuru was right. This laughing guy in front of him had the strength of a pseudo lord demon, which to most people would be strong, but to Rimuru this guy was just a source of information, so why was he sent here? They probably didn't send him here, there is a good chance that he is acting on his own. Ah, I get it, he wants to capture me to appear in front of his bosses, so this guy is. I see. Well at least we'll get some information. Rimuru turned off thought acceleration he was using to talk to Seal and declared. Hey you. Huh? The man stopped laughing when Rimuru called out to him. Yeah, yourself. What? You're an idiot. Ha 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 what nonsense you are saying, you are the idiot here. Kiss my boots and I'll forgive you for it, I'll even let you live as my slave. Huh. I don't need your forgiveness. I just want your information, but don't worry I already know you'll say something like, I don't even talk dead, but I've learned to extract memories so don't worry about answering. Hoog. How dare you underestimate me, take that, a thousand blades of death. After he said this his dagger began to glow red, then he threw it up and it multiplied into several blades that attacked Rimuru. Ha. I offered him servitude, but he dared to underestimate me so I had to kill him. Actually I don't even think I needed to use my strongest attack. That was your strongest attack? I didn't think so. Ha. Huh. What do you mean no big deal? Look how easily he died. There's no way he's alive. Then who are you talking to? The idiot began to break into a cold sweat and slowly turned around and looked back, only to see Rimuru unharmed. Company. Dot how? It was simple really Rimuru just used his absolute barrier. This man's attack was really weak. Well it doesn't matter how I did it. Time for information. Rimuru approached while using his new skill, God of Souls Hades. This was a superior skill that Rimuru, Seal, created by unifying the supreme skills, Hell King Belial, and, Lustful King Asmodeus. The Hell King Belial skill was a skill that ruled over life and death, but with more power on the death part. It belonged to one of Rimuru, Seal, Testerosa's servants, when Rimuru, Seal, wanted to analyze her skill she said, with pleasure sir. The Hell King Belial skill was a skill that ruled over life and death, but with more power on the death part, it belonged to one of Rimuru, Seal, Testerosa's servants, when Rimuru, Seal, wanted to analyze her skill she said, with pleasure sir. And the lustful king Asmodeus skill was also a skill that held power over death and life but she was leaning more towards the life side. This skill was in the possession of the demon lord Ruminus Valentine. He had to agree to some conditions to get her permission. He had to agree to help rebuild her kingdom and also to send an invitation to her wedding. He only agreed because Seal was really excited to analyze this skill. When Seal unified these skills he created the God of Souls Hades. It is a skill that has great control over souls and can even scour their memories, it can also revive people if you have their soul or it can also swap their bodies. When Rimuru discovered the powers of this skill he found it a little scary but said, there's nothing to be done. Rimuru was beginning to rummage through the idiot's memories, when the idiot stated. Now I realize how stupid I was, well at least I will die a good death. As he spoke he pulled a black crystal from his jacket and crushed it. Stop. Rimuru tried to stop him but could not. That was a death crystal, it would burn your body and soul if you injected mana, lowered your defenses and crushed it. And to think he would have a death crystal. I wonder why he had one of those. But those crystals are pretty rare right? Dot. Well, if they knew I didn't need the body to extract information it makes sense for them to use a death crystal but. How could they know about my ability if you interfere with analytical skills? Dot. Hum. There aren't many people I've told about this skill. Well no use thinking about it now, did you get any information before he smashed the crystal? Dot. Eh? Publicly? I've never heard of such powerful people in this world. Dot. Let's go find the other students. Rimuru thought and continued on his way. Rimuru broke through the door and saw a portal. He went through the portal after Seal said it was safe. At the same time in a place far away, in a golden castle. There was a blonde man holding a crystal ball that transmitted images. He took his time to act and when he found the person he was looking for, he found that this person had used his death crystal. 
yet the man seemed to have revealed some information to the greatest known threat. Shit. I should have killed that idiot when I had the chance. He threw the crystal ball at the wall angrily causing it to shatter. This blonde man was the boss of the one who tried to kill Rimuru. Apparently even among the gods the white-haired man was called an idiot. I have to report this. After speaking this the man headed towards the throne room. After bowing he reported what had happened about the idiot to the man on the throne. The man on the throne had a young appearance, but he had an aura of an experienced person. He was wearing casual clothes that didn't really match his position, but no one would dare comment on this. After the report the man on the throne spoke, EHT, I told you that this man would cause trouble, why didn't you kill him? The man spoke in a calm but powerful voice. I thought that if he awakened as a true demon lord he might be a good tool. EHT spoke this as he broke into a cold sweat wondering what his punishment would be. The man on the throne was not someone to be trifled with. EHT, this is already your second mistake, when you went to summon those children to play in your little world you summoned our greatest enemy and ruined the plan now this. The blonde man calling EHT swallowed dryly. I will let you go without punishment this time and since you think an awakened demon lord might be useful, I'll give you that. The powerful man with indigo colored hair and eyes pulled a black orb from his clothes and handed it to EHT. This is. Release that into your little world and let it do the rest of the work. EHT knew the chaos this could cause, but he didn't even care about that. EHT was just happy not to receive punishment and said. Yes. Velda Sama. The leader of the gods. The one who is above EHT, is well known for his immense power. Velda. In an unknown place called the cosmos and beyond the cosmos a place called the void a boundary between reality laid two individual that is seal for a long time one of the individual has a body of a huge dragon that has a big wings big enough to cover the multiple galaxy with its wings, the other is a man his figure can't be seen by anyone. It's almost time my friend, said by the man on the sleeping dragon. We will get our revenge, ch.7, the monster of the abyss. Hajime woke up with the water hitting his face. What? I thought I was dead. He looked around. He was in a river with a relatively strong current. This river was probably my salvation. He muttered as he looked up. He saw a rounded stone ceiling, it was probably a cave. Looks like the current carried me away. When he got a better look he was in an underground cave lit by crystals of green light. The cave had many plants but Hajime didn't see any animals or monsters. This cave was very different from the other floors of the maze, it was less artificial with rounded walls and vegetation. Looks like I got lucky, is there any way I can go back? Hajime encouraged himself to continue forward to look for a way back. Thirty minutes later Hajime heard a sound and hid behind a rock. He spied the place where the sound came from and there he saw a small red-eyed rabbit. Aren't there supposed to be super strong monsters down here? Hajime thought. A gray wolf with gray and red details approached the rabbit as red colored electric sparks came out of its back and attacked it. Totally against Hajime's expectations, the rabbit dodged easily, but the wolf used its electrical discharge ability to attack while the rabbit was in the air, so to yet another surprise, the rabbit propelled itself onto an invisible platform in the air. It was his aerodynamics skill he used aerodynamics once again and kicked the wolf which killed it on the spot. Hugh. Hajime put his hand in front of his mouth to cover his cry, but it didn't work and the white rabbit took off to attack them. It delivered a flying kick at Hajime who defended it with his left arm. Shit. Hajime was thinking about how to survive while the rabbit seemed to be having fun. The rabbit was about to go on the attack once again, but then he stopped. It stared at the top of Hajime's head, or so it seemed. But Hajime noticed. The rabbit was looking at something behind him. When Hajime turned around, he saw a white bear with huge claws and red eyes. It was walking in a bipedal fashion while looking at Hajime and the rabbit as if choosing its prey. Hajime realized that this bear in front of him was not normal, it had an overwhelming pressure that far surpassed the behemoth. The rabbit attacked and was torn apart by the bear's claws in seconds. Meanwhile, Hajime stared. That kicking rabbit could easily kill the behemoth with the force of his kick but the bear in front of him treated him as a nuisance at best. Hajime couldn't move, because of that look in his eyes. A terrifying look that the bear gave him as it ate the rabbit. The bear swallowed the rabbit whole and stood up slowly walking towards him. The bear seemed to say, you're next. Ah. Hajime used all his strength to run but it was useless. 
The bear's claws glowed and it made a vertical slash in the air. And when it did that three lights went straight at Hajime that were similar to Kuki's light swords but they were smaller and there were three. The curved claws went towards Hajime and hit his left arm. Gua. Hajime fell with the impact. He coughed to try to catch his breath. He was already dazed from the pain and the fall, but what he saw in front of him made him forget all that. The bear was eating something. But what is it eating? Hajime thought and then he realized that his left arm was strangely light. He looked at his arm and it was no longer there. Hajime's brain and heart tried to escape reality, but it was impossible. The pain woke him up to reality and he began to instinctively crawl backwards. Ah! Hajime's scream echoed through the dungeon. He began to crawl backwards as fast as he could to get away from the white bear. The bear finished its meal and began to slowly walk towards Hajime. The bear extended its paws towards Hajime as if it planned to swallow him whole. Ah! Khhh, T Tran transmute. With his tear covered face deciding the extreme shot, Hajime put his hand on the wall behind him and used transmutation, it was a reaction caused by pure fear. The ability created a hole that the bear couldn't get through but Hajime could, only the bear wouldn't give up so easily he began to break the wall with his claws in anger at having his prey escape. Grua. The wall was shattered by the single curved claw magic. Wua. Transmute. Transmute. Transmute, transmute. Hajime completely forgot about the pain and everything. He could only run away as his instincts commanded him. Transmute. Transmute. Tran. Hajime used every last mana point to escape the bear and it seemed to have worked. The bear gave up on breaking the wall and walked away. Ah, I'm going to die right. Hajime muttered in disgust as he looked at the bleeding on his arm. There was no way he could stay alive like this. Hajime felt his consciousness fading. Hajime as he fainted recalled his memories of the past. His life flashed before his eyes from elementary school, to moments with his family, to that moment with Kaori in the moonlight. Then he felt something drip on his face like tears and he fainted. Feeling a sensation of the water tasting in his mouth Hajime slowly regained consciousness. Why am I alive? While remembering the events Haim asked himself this question, he tried to get up but hit his head. Hugh. Just at that moment he remembered that the hole he was in was small and did not allow much movement. At that moment he felt a phantom pain in his non-existent arm, and out of reflex he pressed on the wound. Is is it healed? How? Hajime felt a sea of blood surrounding him, anyone who lost that amount of blood would die on the spot. At this moment another drop of water fell on his cheek and dripped into his mouth. Hajime noticed that the moment the drop of water entered he felt a little more recovered. This is. Hajime endured the pain and raised his right arm to use transmute on the ceiling when he used it he saw a blue light coming from a crystal. This crystal was the size and shape of a soccer ball and it let this water flow out that recovered Hajime. Hajime was fascinated by the beautiful crystal that saved his life, and he moved closer to drink more of the healing water, it's called ambrosia, but Hajime doesn't know it yet. When Hajime took more of the water all his pain and fatigue went away. Hajime didn't know that this was actually the greatest of all treasures in history. It was a rare magical stone that sucked mana through the air for millennia until it was formed and was called the Divine Crystal. It would take him hundreds of years more to transform this magical power into a liquid. This liquid was called Ambrosia and it was said that drinking it would heal all wounds and diseases and if you drank it constantly it was said that you would gain eternal life. Hajime crawled to the wall and cringed in fear of the creatures that would be there if he went outside. Both his heart and mind were broken he could only remember the look on the clawed bear's face. That look broke any determination Hajime had, now he had nowhere to go. Someone. Save me. Those words reached no one. Hajime was lying hugging his knees, it was the fourth day he had been like this. Hajime barely moved these past few days. Even though the ambrosia kept him alive it didn't satisfy his hunger and Hajime spent all this time starving while the ambrosia kept him alive. He was also left feeling a lot of pain in his phantom limb. Why did I end up like this? He thought about this several times during the last day. While suffering hunger and phantom pain he could only think this. So after suffering for so long he decided to stop drinking ambrosia and take the easy way out, but then. No I want to live. He didn't know why but he couldn't let himself die. He plunged into thought once again. It was the seventh day since Hajime arrived at the cave. 
Hajime was still suffering heavily from hunger but the fear of leaving was much stronger. Why don't I die? Ah hurry. No I don't want to die. On the eighth day Hajime's mind began to go through changes. Shifting between wishing to die and living Hajime began to have dark thoughts. Why do I have to suffer so much? I didn't do anything to deserve this. I was kidnapped by God, my colleague betrayed me and it ate my arm. These past few days while thinking about what brought him here Hajime remembered the fireball that hit him. There was no way that one of his cheated colleagues could have screwed up a spell and the spell coincidentally hit him. Someone did it on purpose, and he had a good guess. It was the boy who tormented him every day because Hajime was jealous of Kaori. On the ninth day Hajime's thoughts got darker. Who did this to me? Who hurt me? Who forced all these irrational events on me? Hajime began to look for an enemy. All these horrible events ate away at Hajime's soul. Why didn't anyone come to help me? What must I do to make this pain go away? What do I want? I want to live. Who is stopping me? The enemy. Who is the enemy? Those who get in my way. What should I do with them? Without realizing it Hajime began to talk to himself and answer his own questions. Day 10. There was no longer a grudge in Hajime's mind, neither against God, nor against his fellow traitor. All that remained was the memory of the girl who said she would protect him, and the memory of his family. That's right, she said she would protect me, didn't she, so why am I here? She is the reason my life turned to shit in the first place. When he saw that memory was gone too and only the memory of his family was left. That's right I just want to go home. I want to find my brother and go home with him. Anyone who stops me is my enemy. Anyone who becomes my enemy I will. Kill, 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 kill. Without realizing it he began to speak these words. Without malice, hatred or hostility. It was simply murderous intent just kill to survive. Everyone who got in his way was going to die. That was the conclusion he came to. And so the monster of the abyss was born. Now Hajime decided to leave the tunnel. He first needed to eat to regain his strength so he decided to set a trap. At a certain place in a natural cave of the Orcus dungeon. Two grey wolves were hiding waiting for some monster to pass nearby to attack him. They were hiding ten meters away from each other each behind a bush. This was so that when some monster passed by they could attack from both sides making it difficult to defend themselves. The wolf on the right heard a strange noise coming from where his hunting partner was. He moved closer and saw his friend in a square hole and then heard a whisper. Transmute. The ground below the wolf warped and took him next to his mate. The wolf looked up and saw a black-haired boy. He tried to scale the wall of the hole to attack the boy but when he did. Transmute, the boy whispered again and immediately the whole wall wrapped around the wolves leaving them motionless. Hajime transmuted a stone spear from the wall and stuck it into the wolf but the spear did not penetrate the wolf's skin. Tisk. I was hoping for that. He used transmute on his spear turning its tip into a spiral. Well this is going to be painful for you, but I don't care because I'm hungry. He began to twist and thrust the spear while the wolf screamed in pain and let out red rays from its back trying to electrocute Hajime, but since the spear was made of stone the electricity couldn't reach him. After killing the wolves he passed on a knife and removed their pelts. It would take him a long time to make fire and he was very hungry so he decided to eat the raw meat. When he ate it. How disgusting. The taste of the meat was horrible, but it was better than starving. Ah. He felt a pain run through his entire body. It was then that he remembered that monster meat contained a mana that was deadly to humans. But he had to resist, otherwise when the ambrosia ran out he would starve to death. The pain began to worsen and his muscles began to tear. He took a stone jar that he made with transmutation and took the ambrosia in it. After that he began to heal himself, and then the mana from the flesh began to attack again, and the ambrosia healed again. Healing, breaking, healing, breaking. The pain was so horrible that Hajime began to bang his head against the wall to try to pass out, but the ambrosia had the disadvantage that it didn't let the user lose consciousness. After a while of torture the pain stopped. Hajime felt confused and tried to stand up, when he did he felt his body lighter. He looked at his reflection in the small stream beside him and saw. His hair was white, his eyes were red, and his body was muscular. He also noticed that his mana that was a faint blue color was now crimson red, which was the color of mana that monsters had. What? 
So he looked for something in his pocket as he found his status board, which somehow had not been lost. And it showed. Name. Nagumo Hajime Age, 17 Class, Synergist Blessing, Crest of the Storm. Level. 8, plus 6, Strength. 100, plus 8, 8, Vitality. 300, plus 2, 8, 8, Stamina. 100, plus 8, 8. Agility. 200, plus 1, 8, 8, Magic Power. 300, plus 2, 8, 8, Magic Resistance. 300, plus 2, 8, 8. New Skills. Mana Manipulation. Iron Stomach. Lightning Cloak. Why is he like this? Hajime was surprised, he had greatly increased his statuses and also gained three new skills. Mana Manipulation is that red magic power? What does it do? Hajime had a hunch so he tried using Transmute and as he expected he didn't need to use Chanting or Magic Circle as well as the monsters did. Is that serious? That should be impossible. By the way eating magical beasts gives me their abilities. Hajime began to look at the descriptions and test his new abilities. Iron Stomach. Allows you to eat magical beasts' flesh without causing death. I won't have to spend so much holy water. That's good. Lightning Cloak. Allows him to use lightning magic. He did some tests and nothing activated. Then he remembered that he had read in a book that he needed a clear image of the spells to cast them. He visualized his magic, raised his palm and, wow that'll be useful, too bad I can't cast it. There at the top of his hand were red electric beams. They couldn't be cast like normal magic, but they would still be very useful. Hajime took the gray wolf meat and used lightning cloak to roast it. When he ate it it still tasted bad, but he didn't feel any pain or anything like that. He finished eating and then left his temporary base. A day passed and Hajime was full steam ahead. He trained his new skills and his new strength, he also gained a transmutation-derived skill, mineral evaluation. Normally it would take years to develop a derived skill, and he didn't know if he got one so fast because he was from another world or because he ate the flesh of monsters and got stronger. Hajime examined various minerals around him and the most interesting ones he found. Green Light Stone. Stone that when injected with mana releases a green light. If it is broken when fueled all light will be released. Hajime decided to take some to use as light grenades. Burning Stone. Highly flammable ore that when it reaches high temperatures will start to burn and get smaller eventually. It will reach a bursting fit if the temperature continues to increase. It was basically like gunpowder. Hajime had an idea when he saw this description and started looking at other descriptions looking for something, and he found it. Turu Metal. Black, tough metal. Hardness 8, scale of 1 to 10 will become weak when cooled and strong again when heated. That's it. Hajime celebrated and began his project. He had several failures and tried several times when he finally succeeded. Asterisk DOPAN the sound of a revolver was heard at the bottom of the abyss. This gun that Hajime called Donner was made with Turu metal and Flintstone ammunition that Hajime activated with his lightning cloak skill. Making for a powerful shot. Hajime used his donner and easily killed a white rabbit similar to the one that played with Hajime. He ate the rabbit's meat, which also tasted horrible, and looked at his status board again. Name. Nagumo Hajime Age, 17 Class, Synergist Blessing, Crest of the Storm. Level. 14, plus 4, Strength. 300, plus 100, Vitality. 400 Resistencia, 300, plus 100. Agility. 500, plus 200, magic power. 450, plus 50, magic resistance. 450, plus 50. New skills. Divine step. Aerodynamics. Teleportation. As before, eating magical beasts made his status increase. He doesn't get any stronger if he eats a monster he ate before. He also gained three new abilities. He immediately tested divine step. Divine Step made you move at high speed leaving only a blur behind and teleportation basically amplified Divine Step. Aerodynamics meant that Hajime could jump while in the air creating a transparent platform with mana. Hajime after looking at his statuses spoke, it's time to face my nemesis. Hajime headed towards the place that all monsters in the abyss avoided, the lair of the beast. Hajime was hiding and saw the white bear making a meal lying down. Well let's get started. He muttered and approached the bear without hiding. Hey man how are you? Did my arm feel good? The bear looked at Hajime with curiosity and his expression showed, did he come here to die? 
Yeah I came here for revenge, how about we get started? Hajime pointed and fired with Donner. The bear deflected on instinct, and it took off on Hajime running in zigzags to avoid being hit. When he came close, Hajime leapt up with divine step. That's it. I am no longer your prey, I am your enemy now. Hajime spoke this with a fearless smile and shot again. The bear was very fast and managed to dodge his shot and immediately launched curved claw. El Hajime dodged it with a jump, but immediately the bear launched another curved claw thinking Hajime wouldn't be able to dodge it while in the air. Hajime used aerodynamics to dodge and shot the bear. Perhaps because he was surprised that Hajime could jump in the air the bear couldn't fully dodge and the shot hit his left arm ripping it off. Huh. How ironic. After saying that Hajime picked up the arm on the ground and ate a piece, he thought that with that he would get stronger and win easily, but something unexpected happened. Hugh. Hajime felt a sharp pain. By the way the flesh of stronger monsters still caused pain even with the iron stomach. The bear that realized Hajime was vulnerable was about to attack, but Hajime stepped forward and threw a green crystal on the ground causing it to break and release a blinding light. Before the bear could recover from the blindness Hajime used lightning cloak on the blood that was on the ground. The red electric current spread through the bear's blood trail until it reached him, causing him to die electrocuted. Haha. <laughs> finally. Yes he finally killed his enemy. He ate some more of the clawed bear's meat and looked at its status. Name. Nagumo Hajime Age. 17 Class. Synergist's Blessing. Crest of the Storm Level. 20. Plus 5. Strength. 600. Plus 100. Vitality. 500. Plus 100. Resistencia. 460. Plus 100. Agility. 550. Plus 50. Magic Power. 600. Plus 50. Magic Resistance. 600. Plus 50. New Skills. Or Smelting. Or Splitting. Airclaw. Hajime finished eating and went his way.